Hello my precious little dragons, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today I am going to be doing a book look on the number one ladies detective agency by Alexander McCall Smith. So this book is the first in a series of the same name that focuses on Botswana's only female detective, Ma Precious Remotesway. And so this is sort of her origin story, how she became a detective, her family's life story, and then it goes through a series of small mysteries with one larger mystery kind of interwoven throughout the book. So there are 20 books in the series currently. I have only read this first one. I really don't know anything about how the series progresses. I just know about this one specific book. So the first book was published in 1998 and Alexander McCall Smith actually grew up in. So he's from Zimbabwe and he lived in Botswana and he, and he helped co-found the law school and taught law at the University of Botswana. So he's a lawyer and then he delved into writing in his later years. So the reason I'm giving you a little bit of backstory on the author is because I was a little bit, I should say I was a little bit like skeptical going into the book because like I knew it was like a really popular series but I knew like Okay, well, it takes place in... Sorry, I was snoring in the background. I knew it took place in Botswana, and I was like, okay, so there's this random British white guy writing about, like, his main character who's, like, an, like a Bots Botswanian. I, mean, I, was just, I was just a little skeptical about how good it was going to be, and obviously I am not from... Like, I'm not from Botswana, so I won't have a lot to say on how accurate it is to Botswanian culture in the 90s because he did live there and in Zimbabwe for most of his life. I figured he probably had a pretty good grasp on the culture. <laughs> but I was, like like I said, I was just, I was a little skeptical I was, and I was very curious. So I, I just tried to go in with a critical eye, but at the same time acknowledging that, like, I'm a white American woman, I wasn't really sure how critical I was going to be able to be <laughs> other than okay does he write women in general well but the experiences of me as a woman would be different than Ma Remote Sway as a woman so I mean yeah <laughs> um, I all that to say I just wasn't sure what I was getting in for and it's a bit of an older book so I was like uh, is this going to have sexist stuff is this going to have racist stuff you, you just you never know what you're getting in for anyway so uh, for my look today I Try. I tried to look up like Botswana like sort of beauty standards or just fashion in general in the 90s and I was coming up kind of nil. I wasn't really sure what to do. The most I could find was I did find some a little bit more modern sort of fashion influences and those said essentially like more of an emphasis on natural beauty so natural makeup not really looking heavy at all so I'm just going to try and lean into the natural side today which is a little bit different from the average book look I do so that's kind of fun I just get to do a little bit of a natural thing so I also wanted to use sort of majority black owned products if I was trying to be really intense I would have done like majority African owned products but I really don't have the funds right now to go out and buy a bunch of new products specifically for one video so I'm trying to make do I did my best of it. I don't have I don't have um, everything black owned but so I was I was just trying to like I was trying to think about how I could think that I'm like I'll do my best <laughs> with that. When it comes to a little bit more of like a summary up the story so like I said this is kind of your introduction to Ma Remotesway's world. She starts the she starts her detective agency in this book basically she and this isn't really a spoiler because it's like it's on the back of the book but she basically sells off her father's cattle herds after he dies and uses the money to move to Gaborone which is the capital of Botswana and she buys herself a house and she buys the building for her detective agency and becomes Botswana's very first and only female private investigator. So I thought actually McCall Smith did a surprisingly good job at thought Michael Smith did a surprisingly good job at writing women. Not that like men can't write women well, it's just I was again I wasn't sure what I was getting in for especially with a little bit older book. I mean it's what 20 22 years? Yeah so it's a it's a 22 year old book so I just I don't know. <laughs> so again I can't speak to how well he writes 
um, Botswanian culture or Botswanian woman, but I can say from my perspective, I think he did a decent job, but if you're curious, I would encourage you to try and look up other reviews to see what they say if you're curious about that specific aspect of it. It seemed like it was fairly well received um, in Botswana itself, and they actually, and it had a movie made and stuff like that, so I mean, it seems like they did decent at just the reception in general. So that's about all I have to say on that. But I can talk about things like the writing style and everything, so that's what we're going to go into next. I will warn you when we get into the spoiler section, as per usual, this is just my beginning summary. He does very much have that old charming writing style that you might see in other older British authors so I would compare it sort of to that the narrative style of Lewis or Tolkien where it's a little bit more long-winded a little bit more descriptive not I wouldn't say flowery but it, it does have that sort of grandfatherly charm to it like someone's sitting someone's specifically sitting you down to tell you a story which I do absolutely adore that writing style. So that's that gets major points for me. What does not get points for me is random POV switches. So this is one of my least favorite writing uh, decisions. <laughs> I strongly dislike random POV switches and this book doesn't really do it well in my opinion it, just because it switches so much and so often but you do still spend the majority of the book in Marumotsu's perspective so and it's not first person it is third person but you do still spend the majority of the book in Marumotsu's perspective so it just seems more jarring when you switch to another one I would say the most jarring which this one is weird but because as its own section I really enjoyed it but the POV switch bothered me and that was um, Ma Ramotswe's father tells his own story and he tells all about his life and how he grew his cattle herds and how he had his family it was just precious in her father so he tells his own story which like I said as its own section I really loved it I thought that it was written very well but I thought the switch to his and I believe it was first person if I remember correctly because I read this quite a while ago and I'm just now getting around to actually doing the book look on it but I believe it was in first person and it just it really messed with me it took me like it took me a bit to reorient myself and I was like what the heck is happening and you know eventually I got into it and I was like oh this is really cool and I liked his story and I liked the way he told things and his narrative voice was very different from I would say the rest of it and that was I would say that was the most jarring because that was the most perspective switchy and it was a decently long portion of the book in comparison to the other POV switches because the other ones were more like they might have to do with the mystery or something like that like you're learning the backside of the mystery um, especially like the main mystery I would say you get more of that POV switch. But those seemed a lot less dramatic, I would say, than that one switch. And that was something, it, it's just, it's a, it is a personal taste thing. It's just something that I tend not to like. So that did dock it for me. Just cause I feel like, I feel like generally speaking, there should be other ways to sort of stick to your main perspectives and still tell the story well and still get all of the relevant details across or just have a more impersonal style of narration where you can sort of jump from place to place and it makes sense. But if you're spending the majority of the book in one person's point of view, then switching it is just, it just really takes me out of the story. So again, it's a personal preference thing, but if it's also something that bothers you, then at least you kind of know what you're getting in for. I would say it's kind of interesting that it does have that old charming style of narration, even though it's not really that old of a book. Again, it's only, tw it's 22 years old, which is old, but it's not like, I mean, when I'm comparing it to Lewis and Tolkien who are writing their books in the, in the 30s and 40s, it's interesting that he has that much of an older style. At least I think so. He did start writing when he was older, so maybe it's like, maybe this is like reminiscent of the stuff that he grew up with as a kid. I don't know. Or that's who he learned his writing style from. But again, I like that style, so I'm not gonna dock points because I like that style. As I mentioned before, it has a lot of sort of mini mysteries and then goes into the bigger mystery throughout the book and at the end. It's not really one cohesive mystery, so it's not like you're reading a Nancy Drew book, you know you're getting like the mystery of the, old, the secret old clock or whatever whatever the first one is. It's it's not like when you're reading Nancy Drew or Agatha Christie, you're getting one mystery that the detective is solving at a time. 
you're getting, like I said, a lot of backstory and then multiple, multiple mysteries that are being solved. And the one slightly bigger one that kind of wraps everything up, which was interesting because I don't know that I've ever really read a mystery book that kind of uses that style. So I thought that was an interesting choice. And I think it, I think it worked all right. I'm trying to decide if I want to keep this on that or if I want to use, I feel like mm, there's a little bit of fresh paint. You know, sparkles. Very natural. So I do actually love Ma Remotesway Way as a character. I think she's wonderfully smart, she's dedicated, and she's very good-hearted. I like seeing a detective that, you know, acts very human. They're not just, they're not just a typical logical only Sherlock Holmes. She's very much all about the heart and her perspective is that you need to get to know people to solve mysteries. Like it's not as much about the clues and the logic as much as it is about the people. And I really appreciate that. I thought it was an interesting route to take and I really really enjoyed it. And she's also an unapologetically plus size 35 year old so it's a little bit different than your usual sort of female main character demographic. So you know, yeah. I also really enjoy like the way he describes Botswana makes it sound so nice and I love how much Ma Remotsui loves it. Like the, the way she describes Botswana like it's just you can tell it's just her favorite place on earth. She like is absolutely in love with with her culture with the land and I don't know it just makes it sound so nice it makes me want to go and visit like I mean when you know there's not a pandemic on but it sounds like such a beautiful beautiful place and the way she describes it just made me happy I appreciate it oh gosh I do have to give somewhat of a trigger warning so in the book it covers a because it solves multiple mysteries it covers a broad variety of topics um, and in Ma Remontsway's backstory, there is domestic violence and sexual assault. So that actually really, it really surprised me when it came up in the book. I was not expecting it. Fortunately, that specific section was short, but I just, I was wholly unprepared for it. And it just kind of, again, it was very jarring for me. And I was like, oh my goodness, what the heck is happening? And even though it's short, and it's not overly descriptive. I guess I would just say I wasn't expecting it from the style of book. So I just wanted to put that warning out there. So if that's something that you're sensitive to, even in um, more vague small doses, um, that is something to be aware of from this book. There are a couple other smaller things I want to give like a smaller sort of warning for, um, such as uh, child kidnapping and infidelity, things like that. But the, the biggest trigger warning is definitely for that uh, sexual assault and domestic violence piece, especially since I know that can be, even in small doses, very triggering to a lot of people. The only character I really want to focus in on, because it, she's kind of the only character that really matters, which sounds bad to say, but it's true, is Ma Remotesui herself. The other characters very much come in as just sort of peripheral side characters, um, maybe with the exception of her father, and that's just because she played because her father plays such a big role in her life that he's constantly mentioned and then of course we do get that section where he tells his own story and I, I actually love her father like just the way he's described he sounds very he sounds very much like a good a good good man like I said the other characters are fairly peripheral they come in and out uh the only other one and you can tell he's going to be a major character in other books but he's less of a major character in this one except um he does play a somewhat large role in the sort of bigger mystery is jail, Mr. JLB Matakone, who is, I'd say, is Mauro Motsui's best friend. And he is a mechanic. He's sweet and charming. I really appreciated him. Uh, then you have Mauro Motsui herself. As I already mentioned, I really loved her. I think character work on her, even though it was lacking and flat in a lot of the others, I felt that Ma herself was just very fun and well-rounded. She's a very honorable character. She's like, if I can't solve your problem, I'll wave your fee. And it's interesting because, you know, we get her from the start and when business is really slow and she's just like, it'll come, it'll come. She's just very optimistic, just waiting for, waiting for things to go the right way. And it's just, you know, it's interesting. I feel like she's rather unique among detective characters and that's what I liked. 
as I also mentioned, she's a plus size character. And so that in and of itself was kind of fun because you know, her it doesn't detract from her worthiness to be a detective. It doesn't detract from her attractiveness as a woman. She gets like three proposals of marriage in the book, which isn't really a spoiler just because, I don't know, I guess technically it's a spoiler, but it doesn't feel like a spoiler. But she's just like, you know what? I'm happy with who I am. I'm happy with my career. And you know, it's all like I just am happy the way I am and she's very confident in herself. There is one moment where she mildly like skinny shames like stick women and she's like happy to be a traditional African fat woman and that's that's pretty much a quote. <laughs> like stick woman with I have in quotes and then my, the rest of my note says she's happy to be a traditional African fat woman so I think I slightly summarized there but it was it was pretty much just like it was pretty close to like a direct quote. But considering it was written in the 90s and body positivity is um, still an ongoing struggle. I, I think it still did decently well, like even though ideally, you know, you wouldn't pit your plus size woman against your skinny women. It, just the fact that there was plus size body positivity at all, even in a different cultural context, so it may be very different in Botswana. Again, that's not my area of expertise, but reading from an American perspective and knowing it was written by a British Zimbabwean <laughs> Zimbabwean? Zimbabwean author. Specifically a man. I just thought it was kind of refreshing that was in there at all. It would have been just as easy for him to, you know, kind of ignore her traditional context where she's more comfortable being plus size. There's even, there's one moment where she goes to like a clothing stand and she's admiring the seller's clothes and she's like, oh, well maybe this one. And Myra Meltzway just very, like very calmly is like, oh, I don't think you have anything in my size but she's like like she's not really upset about it and the the seller's just like oh yeah well you know it, it was just it was interesting to me because like I like for me I consider myself to have like decent body positivity you know I've struggled up and down over the years but clothes shopping usually gets me especially when there's nothing in my size that's really really disheartening for me like there's been there's been times where I've literally gone to a store and I've tried on like 20 pairs of jeans and literally nothing has fit and that for me has been really really difficult and so even just this one like itty bitty scene where she's like oh you don't have anything in my size and she's totally chill about it that was like wow she's really confident in herself she really is she really has good body positivity and it was it was really refreshing to read considering its age I think that in and of itself is really really impressive even if you're taking a different cultural context into consideration because it sounds like it sounds like from the way it was written that maybe that is more of the cultural norm or the cultural standard in um, Botswana itself or at least it was back then and that the skinny standard was more of a European imposition on the traditional Botswanian culture for me trying to like interpret from what I was reading but even so Again, for me, as an American reader, it was really refreshing. Okay, so we are going to get into the plot section. So at this point, I'm going to give you a spoiler warning. So if you don't want to know anything else about the rest of the plot, um, you can go ahead and skip to the timestamp um, that is down below in the description box and it will take you to my final look and thoughts. While so you're down there, if you wouldn't mind liking, commenting, subscribing, all of those YouTuber things, that would be awesome. That get into the plot. Um, oh, I started to put my bronzer on and I haven't even done foundation yet because I'm a little out of it today. So uh, it starts off with kind of telling how she started her detective agency and then throughout the book it really gives you more detail on her backstory, on her family, and it's not really, it's not completely in chronological order I should say. It kind of is woven and a lot of it has to do with the narration style where it really does feel like someone's just sitting down to tell you a story. So it kind of has this sort of weaving connecting bit where it's like, oh, well, this connects back to this, which connects back to this thing in her backstory. And some of the transitions are better done than others. Like I said, some of them are really abrupt and jarring, um, specifically when they come with a point of view switch as well as switching up the chronological timeline, because that will, I, I mean, maybe, maybe you'll track it perfectly and it doesn't throw you a loop for it all, but it threw me for a loop. As I mentioned before, she made, she started with 
the money she got from the sale of her father's cattle herd after she died. And then there's kind of these segmented mini mysteries and we start off with a woman named Happy Babetel. She is more of like a career driven younger woman. Her father shows up after being gone her whole life and just stays with her and she basically goes to Ma Remotsway and says, I am not convinced that this man is my father. I think he's just using me and using, you know, me wanting to sort of having to traditionally provide for my father as like an excuse to use up my resources and stay at my house because he's very lazy and she's like she just wants Ma to figure out whether or not she is his she is her real father. And there's a lot of dumping on men in the specific aspect of the narrative which again given the author given the time I think it's honestly kind of funny <laughs> like it again I wasn't expecting it but just the way the way it's just very honest about all of the character situations was kind of refreshing it's like yeah <laughs> it's kind of this really interesting thing because right up front in this very first case you are presented with Ma's ability to um, not only connect with people but really to like use her social skills to figure things out she's just has extreme social intelligence. She goes up and she basically, um, which this part was a little, a little sus. I'm like, I guess things work differently. Cause she, she disguised herself as a nun, I believe. Yeah, she disguised herself as a nun. She basically, with this rapid fire talking, like gets this man to admit he's not actually Happy's father. Like just the way she worded it was just so clever and so forceful. And I was just like, wow, this is, like, this woman is impressive. And then, okay, yeah, it does transition to first person. So then after after that case, it does go into the story of her father. I believe it starts with her, her under a tree and she looks up at the night sky and then it goes into, into her father's story. And it transitions to first person. And like I said, that was the most daring thing because up until this point it's been in third person and then it switches to first person and it's back in time and I'm just like, whoa, 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 what the heck is happening? But I do like her father's narration a lot. I like him as a character a lot. And it, like, if the rest of the book has a charming style of narration, that one, that one just transports you instantly to feeling like you're sitting down with a grandfather and it's got full tea and nostalgia. -ness. It's just really interesting. Um, there was one quote I wanted to talk about from her father and he talks a lot about, again, his life, his experiences living in Botswana and he went over to South Africa, I believe it was to work, and he worked as a miner and so we talked about that. He talked about, it was just, it was all very interesting and he also talked a lot about his faith in his section and he had this quote which I wrote down because I was just like, truth! And he was like, some people think of God as a white man, which is an idea that came with the missionaries and I'm just like, that whole section was just very interesting. Like he gave this perspective in such a real, I would say sort of visceral way. So even though the introduction to that section was jarring, the section on its own was one of my favorite parts of the book because it seemed so real. You know, it's interesting. Like it made me have like mixed feelings. I'm like, what do I feel about this section? Yeah, it just made me feel a little like, mixed app yeah, but I just I thought that was really interesting and again it's written by a white British man and I'm just like I think the way it's written I would not have expected that to be the author I guess and maybe maybe that's just me maybe I'm uninformed maybe you know other people would pick up on it faster but if if I didn't know ahead of time that Alexander McCall Smith was a white British man who just happened to spend most of his life in Zimbabwe and Botswana I would not have guessed that's who's writing the story. <laughs> That, that's just my my own personal impression. Okay, so after after his section, then we go on to a little bit more of Ma's backstory. Ooh, um, this is this is when I'm going to again say this is the section that has the domestic violence and assault because it talks about her relationship when she was younger to a man named Makote who was a musician and how how she met him, how they became a couple, all of that. And at first he seems very charming. He's he seems perfect and then it's not and this is where there is the sexual assault scene again it doesn't go into a ton of detail but it's very clear that's what it is so the, the one good thing is that it is very short it's in no way romanticized it is very much 
clear that this is going to be that he is not a good man, that he is not good for modern world's way. Yeah. And Precious's father is like from the start, like, I don't trust him. I don't I don't think he's good. Like, I want you to be happy, but like I just have a bad feeling about this. Like it, it, the way it's portrayed feels again very honest. Like it's part of it's Mother Motsui's story. So again, not mad at it. Just want to put it out there that it's in there. And then goes into the beginnings of a very abusive relationship, more assault, assault on her while she's pregnant. And then he leaves her. She goes back to her father. She's still pregnant, and her child only lives five days after she's born. And she never, she doesn't remarry after that. And she just, she just lives with her father and he dies 14 years later and then that's when the detective agency is set up. And it, it just it covers a lot in a very short period of time and it's a lot of really heavy stuff in a short period of time but I think the purpose of it was more to set up that hey Malra Motswe has been through a lot in her life it's given her a lot of wisdom beyond her years because you know at the point um where we start the story she's only 35 years old so it's not like she's like in her 60s and she's lived all this life she had a lot of really heavy experiences in her young adulthood and she has decided instead of becoming bitter instead of letting them define her she's going to overcome them she's going to be stronger she's going to help others and she chooses actively to be kind and compassionate to other people she's like happy with herself she's happy with her place in life and I think that that part of it that showing her resilience is honestly really again really refreshing and it doesn't show a lot of that journey between point a and b but you see that okay she got here she got to this place where she's healthy, where she's able to be resilient and help others and be kind and compassionate, and that's really cool. So after that, next case that's covered is a woman has her missing husband that she asks Ma to find. She suspects infidelity. It turns out he was like swept away in a baptism. There's a man-eating crocodile and Ma Romotswe shoots the crocodile it gets it gets a very actiony very quickly. She's just like, I'm gonna go shoot a crocodile. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> that one got very dramatic very quickly, but it also wasn't like it wasn't like a major plot point or anything. It's just like Mara Motswe goes and shoots the crocodile, and it's like, excuse excuse you, what? Okay. And then we have another POV switch, which introduces us to our main mystery which is the kidnapping of a small curious boy. I mentioned the curious because the curious is what gets him kidnapped um, but he's just it's set up he's very sweet he's very innocent oh he gets kidnapped um, and he gets kidnapped and it's uh, heavily implied it has to do with a witch doctor then it doesn't come up again for a while like like literally nothing for a while I'm like are we ever gonna come back to this and then nothing for a really long time and it goes back to the small mysteries and I'm like okay that was an interesting choice um might want to sprinkle this in throughout which it, it does but again not for a while and then we have the mystery of the unfaithful husband the mystery of the good and bad doctor so it's like which that one I thought was one of the most interesting ones of these little mini mysteries because it's small remote way is really good friends with one of the doctors at the local hospital he's like we have this like resident basically who is in training but he had really good recommendations he came from a really really good medical school some days he's amazing he's on point and other days he's really terrible I'm worried he's abusing drugs and so he's like but I don't want to I don't want to accuse him without knowing for sure because it can bring a lot of like it could bring a lot of bad press on the hospital and I don't want people who already are kind of wary of coming to the hospital to get wind of this and then not want to come to the hospital at all. So he was like, I would rather you find out privately and then if he is, I'll do something about it. And so she has to unravel this mystery of the good and bad doctor and that one was interesting. And for a while I was like, what the heck is happening? Like, I don't get what's going on. And then all of a sudden it clicked and I'm like, Ooh, okay. That one was by far my favorite of the little mini, the little mini mysteries with, and they all kind of show off a different aspect of Ma Remote's way of her talents and her abilities. And I really, again, I really appreciated that. I appreciate that they kind of show off her wit, her ability to think on her feet, to use her connections with people, and her to her ability to really use her connections with people and her social relationships to solve these mysteries. Um, there's also a mystery, I don't know if I mentioned it, it didn't. Okay, there's also like a mystery that focuses on like an overprotective <laughs> 
like an overprotective father who's like worried his youngest daughter is like seeing a boy and he wants her to spy on to spy on his daughter to see what she's up to and Ma has like kind of a moral crisis she's like you know like kids these days like can you know it's different it's different now it's not this traditional like she should be able to do it's like she should be able to do what she wants basically and she has this real moral dilemma of like well, I need the money he's one of the richest people in the area do I take this case what do I do and so it's really interesting to watch her morally work through that case it's a very character focused book for a mystery series which I think is really interesting but again it doesn't really focus on a lot of the peripheral characters it's all to do with it's all to do with Mal Rimmel's way. It's all to do with her being an honorable person, with her being a kind person, with her being smart and witty. And like each of these little mysteries shows off a different part of her abilities. And then towards the end, we come back to the witch doctor mystery, which again, she kind of showcases all of these different things that you've seen her display throughout the mini mysteries. So I, I did like the way that it kind of used all of those little pieces in the in the big mystery as kind of like you're defeating all the little mini bosses as you go along in the video game and then you get to the final boss. One thing I don't know is I don't know how, I don't know what the portrayal of the traditional medicine is like. I don't know how accurate that is to what it, what it was actually like. I just know like they're saying with this specific quick doctor they sometimes use like these children and like Ma finds um bones and they're saying they're probably children's bones um that are in like in a car um that's like a talisman and it's like okay well this witch doctor is like really well connected to a lot of people in the government so it's probably gonna be really hard to get him to to do anything that's when she kind of gets JLB Matakone involved in everything and I should I should mention as a side note that um Mr. JLB Matakone which it always it always uses his full name and I think it's really interesting but like I said he is best friends with Mara Motsue but he's also like he's one of the three that proposes marriage to her and uh, she says no because she's worried that if she gets married it'll really upset this great life that she's built for herself and she's happy with who she is and where she is and she just she doesn't really want to interrupt that she's scared to interrupt that it would have been so easy and I would say almost expected to sort of write to sort of write his reaction as being like oh well you just don't love me and then they stop being friends but he actually is actively still a really good friend to her he is actively supportive of her and he helps her out and he plays a really big role in this last mystery and I just thought because you could tell he was really upset because he he absolutely loves her and he's like you know what I'm willing to love you as a best friend I don't have to love you as a, as a husband and you could tell even though it hurts him he's like I'm you know I'm gonna work through this I want what's best for you and it's like it was just such a mature way of handling it that I was like oh my goodness I really love him he's great he did the bare minimum <laughs> oh, the standards are on the floor anyway but he's a really big help in this mystery and I will say like again this is a big spoiler like Mara Motsui does end up finding um she does get connected to the witch doctor and she basically like tricks his wife into sort of admitting everything that's going on like gets her to like take him out because she's like oh the boy is alive the boy is alive and I was like oh my gosh I thought like I thought I was dead oh my goodness I'm so happy he's alive oh my god <laughs> your powder folks. Look, I don't look like I've been baking. Like not my face, just actually baking with flour and there was a big explosion of flour. Lord help me, I look like a ghost. Desk is covered in something powder. Ah. Okay, well, um, that, hurts. um, what the heck was I talking about? I don't <laughs> blend out this powder real quick. Holy crap. Anyway, she tricks the witch doctor's wife. The boy is out basically serving with the cattle and he's basically completely fine. They just took him so he could basically be a like a child slave to one of their friends, I guess. Um I, anyway, but she then takes the boy and leaves the witch doctor's wife with the cattle and then there's this like super sweet father-son reunion between the boy and his father. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry for all of this. And then at the very very end of the book, she agrees to marry Jailbi Matakone. She was like, "You know what? Like, he's, he's just, 
like she, it was kind of like this almost trial period where she saw that he was going to be sweet and supportive no matter what it was kind of abrupt but I wasn't totally mad at it because you could see there was really that deep level of friendship and love there and she just had to kind of make sure that he was going to continue to encourage her to not be to like let her still run her detective business and he's like no I love that you run your detective business it's like really great really healthy and like even even back then like like when she first rejected him she'd said she basically said she loved to marry him she was just happy in her current life and scared she wouldn't be as happy when she was married but she just like over the course of the story she did kind of come around because she realizes that he does still want her to be her he doesn't want her to change for him he wants he wants them to be exactly as they are already just married which i thought was really again really nice healthy mature refreshing you love to see it I had to go a little bit heavy on the setting spray because holy crap I like powdered my face into oblivion. I forgot highlighter. So much for my natural glow. I'll just tap a little bit on it. Here what if I like kind of tap it in tap it in tap it in. Oh my goodness this is one of the only times I've like finished my look and talking about the book at like the same time. <laughs> like the same time that like almost never happens. I'm very happy with myself. So this is the final look. Again, very natural. All things considered a little bit odd for for a book look. <laughs> it's usually so dramatic and now I'm here like this is an everyday look, but, but that's that's what the book called for. It's a little bit everyday, but it's still nice. It's a little elevated, a little special. Yeah, so in summary, I did really I did really enjoy the book. There were aspects that I didn't like, so it wasn't it wasn't a perfect read for me. It wasn't like I gave it five stars. I can't even remember what I gave it. I really don't like the star system. Like other than like five star and one star, like I feel like it's very flexible because there's aspects I like, there's aspects I didn't. It's hard to like pick a spot. But like I did have mixed feelings on it in some spots, but there were other things that I really enjoyed. And I think um, Nicole Smith's character work is actually pretty good, specifically when it comes to his main characters. I think his side characters tend to be a little bit more in the flat area, but um, the way he tells it, it kind of, it fits with his narration style. It fits, it fits with his literary choices. I wouldn't mind a little extra character work on some of these other side characters, but I mean, it's the first in a series of 20 books. So I'm sure they develop more over the series. I'm not sure if I'll continue reading. Mostly just because I have so many other books on my TBR. I may pick it up again at some point. Based on a couple of the things I read about the rest of the series, there are some things I would be interested in reading. Specifically, um, the storyline with depression. I think that would be interesting to read just to kind of see how it was developed, how it was handled. As for this book, I mean, I think overall it's good. Again, I really like having a main detective character who is compassionate and focused more on people than on the logic of it. Like she does love to solve the puzzles. She is very smart, but she loves connecting with people too. And I think that that's really interesting. But if these, if these switches don't bother you, then I would say go ahead, give it a read. It's not very long. It, um, again, I think the choice to have a bunch of mini mysteries and one bigger mystery is interesting. Um, I do wish that the bigger mystery had been woven throughout a little bit better um, because it was sort of right at the beginning and then not at all for the big middle chunk of the book and then came in more towards the end and that to me like it felt it made it the book feel a little bit disjointed but each individual thing I thought was done really well so that, that that's I guess what I should say I think each individual aspect was done really well and then as a whole it didn't tie in together quite as nicely as I maybe would have hoped. I don't know if that develops throughout the series, if maybe he just gets more comfortable with his characters and it changes a little bit. All I can speak on, of course, is this specific book. So if you have read multiples of the series and want to <laughs> enlighten us down below in the comments whether you first of all agree with my assessment about the writing about the book or if you see kind of a development or shift in the narrative and writing style please please let me know I'm very curious and if if it does kind of get a little bit better in that sense of the jarring POV switches I would definitely be a lot more inclined to continue reading but it's one of those things it's hard to know unless someone specifically tells you or you just go ahead and read it yeah that's about all I have to say again I, I think whether or not I recommend it just depends on what you're looking for in a book. I think it's a good mystery. I think it's clever, but I can I can definitely see why it's so popular. I can I can definitely understand that. This is not the first Al Alexander McCall Smith book I've actually ever read. <laughs> there was another one I read last year that I did not like nearly as much, but I think it's because I didn't realize it was part of a series and I kind of hopped in 
and so I was just very confused throughout a lot of it. But I think I think in terms of even just narrative style, in terms of writing, I do prefer this one over that one. I think or I can't remember what it was. I'll put it up here. It was like the 44 Edinburgh Street or something like that. That one I didn't appreciate nearly as much. That's about all I have. So thank you so much for joining me today. I love you all so much. Stay magic. Keep reading. I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.